السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ما بعد Today is the second halqa talking about the uh, enemy of uh, the main enemy Iblis We mentioned last halqa that Iblis min al-kafirin he is one of the disbelievers Iblis min al-jinn he is one of the jinn and not from the angels and Iblis will be in the hellfire forever of course Iblis uh, created from the fire as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, and also one, 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 one of the important points that uh, Iblis Allah gave him the long life and subhanallah he will plan the plans, the plots to, to misguide people. This is his aim, this is his goal, this is his job. To make us misguided. Uh, today inshallah, I'll mention one of the ways of shaitan. How the shaitan makes people uh, misguided. How he, they, they mis go astray. Number one, al-jahl, ignorance. Okay, this is one of the biggest problems. To make people uh, ignorant. If you notice in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned many times, or in some place in the Quran, قُلْ uh, هَلْ in Surah Al-Kahf, that we read every Friday. قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالَ الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعِهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنْعًا And they think that they are doing good, but they are doing bad. Why? Because of ignorance. One of the reasons, because, because of ignorance. You think that you are doing a good job. Okay? Yeah, for example, if you have a wound, and you, every day you are washing your wound. You think that I make my wound clean to clean the bacteria, to clean any virus. Okay, and you think you are, you are doing good. But this is very bad for the wound. You should not touch your wound with water. Okay, why you are doing this? Because of ignorance. Subhanallah. And also in, in the other ayah, Allah in, in Surah Al-A'raf, كَمَا بَدَأَكُمْ تَعُودُونَ فَرِيقًا هَدَى وَفَرِيقًا حَقَّ عَلَيْهِمُ الضَّلَالَةِ إِنَّهُمْ اتَّخَذُوا الشَّيَاطِينَ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ And they think that they are guided. They think that they are guided. Subhanallah. Why they think that, that, that they are guided? Because they are ignorant. If they, if they have knowledge, they will discover that they are misguided. They are not on the wrong and in the right path and they will change and they will correct their way because of ignorance how iblis will make people ignorant okay there are also many ways number one he will tell you don't enter the halaqa of ilm don't seek knowledge don't read the books don't watch the good youtube don't listen to the lectures subhanallah okay why he will come in different ways. No, you have to earn money. You have many children and your salary is a uh, low salary and you need more money. You, you have to pay the fees the school. You have to pay for the uh, medical services. Okay, all the time. If you think to attend halqa, no. Don't attend halqa. If you think to open a book, no. Go and open the internet. Do some mark business. Online business. Okay? So who will keep you away from the knowledge? Okay? You'll be ignorant. Subhanallah. And uh, there are, of course, there are many ayat and hadith about the, 
the virtues of knowledge and we mentioned them last last week another problem okay uh, of the ignorance Iblis and the shaitan will tell people yalla give fatwa without knowledge this is common now giving fatwa i mean answering religious questions without knowledge people sitting in the duania or at at work you are sitting with your colleagues giving fatwa from where this fatwa no i think this is good i think this is bad this is haram i think this is uh, halal i think this is wajib okay so uh, this is from the shaitan and this is one of the major sins giving fatwa i mean answering religious question, questions without knowledge allah says in the quran wa an taqulu yani from the major sins or from the haram things wa an taqulu ala allah ma la ta'lamun okay to mention something that as if it is from allah and you don't have knowledge giving fatwa answering religious questions without knowledge هذا حلال وهذا حرام this is allowed and this is forbidden why i feel it is halal uh, by logic this is haram okay but you don't have anything from the quran and sunnah like what you what is happening now in kuwait or the last week you know the, the about the, the the statues and the, the images the, these things okay الاصنام الصغيره الصور هذه تماثيل ها 3D printing. 3D printing. 3D printing. Okay. Yeah. Idols. <laughs> Subhanallah. So some some Muslims say, what is the problem with this? Do you think that Muslims will worship these pictures or these uh, these things? Okay. And they are saying, no, no, don't listen to the shiuch. Don't listen to the scholars. If the issue is related to to Sharia, you have to keep silent and wait what the scholars will say. Everyone is talking about this issue. What is the problem? Huh? No problem with this. Don't say no problem with this. There are <laughs> yani, uh, uh, proofs from Quran, from Sunnah, scholars mentioned this. Okay, you have to listen and respect what the scholars and you have to follow what the scholars say. If they are telling you from the Quran and Sunnah. So this is a very important and this is one of the major sins. If you say something without proof, you say this is halal and this is haram. Without proof and evidence from the Quran. And Sunnah. One, يعني, Subhanallah. Look how what what the Shaitan. If you remember last week, we mentioned that the importance of knowledge will protect you and will, uh, يعني, will protect the society. And we mentioned the story when the man gave fatwa. I mean, a companion gave fatwa to another one, and he killed him by fatwa. Okay, you remember there was a wound in his head, and he took a shower, then he died. Why? Because his friend told him, you have to do ghusl, you have to take shower. And sometimes you will, you will kill yourself because of your fatwa. And what is the example from the sunnah? There is a famous story mentioned by the Prophet wasallam. A man killed himself by a wrong fatwa. You know the man who killed 99 persons? Then he wants to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he was seeking for a scholar. Then people told him, go to that man and ask him. But that man was not, was not a scholar. He was what? Abid, Abid worshipper. And uh, you know, Rahab, what they call him, monk? Yeah. Huh? Monk. He doesn't have knowledge. He worships Allah, but without knowledge. They told him, go and ask that man. He went to that man, asking him, uh, I killed 99 persons and now I feel sorry, I want to repent. Is it possible that Allah accepts my repentance? So he killed 99 people? No way. Then he killed him. So this monk or this worshiper killed himself. How? Wrong fatwa. How? Ignorance. The shaitan told him, Yalla, give him an answer. Subhanallah. Then again, alhamdulillah, this man, I mean the killer, 
again, he feels he felt sorry and he was searching for a, a fatwa. Then he asked people, where is the, where, I want to ask a scholar. Then they told him, go to that scholar. And alhamdulillah, he went to a scholar. When he asked him, alhamdulillah, the scholar gave him the correct fatwa and he guided him. He told him, who can stop you if you want to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Okay, so this is very important. I mean, in this issue, don't think that Allah will not accept you. Don't say, I did a lot of sins, different types, all the types of sins, major, minor sins. So Allah will not forgive my sins. This is wrong. And this is haram. You have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim, the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will forgive all sins if you repent to him. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَغَنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say to my slaves, those who transgress, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope that Allah forgive you. Don't lose hope from the mercy of Allah. Why? Allah forgives all sins. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا All the sins can be forgiven if you repent to Allah. Even shirk, Yes, even the shirk, like the companions, okay, they were mushriks, many of them or maybe most of them. Then when the Prophet ﷺ told them about Islam, alhamdulillah, they accepted Islam and Allah forgave all the sins. Amr ibn al-As, he was very, يعني, subhanallah, uh, a strong enemy. against. He was against Islam. He hates Muhammad ﷺ, one Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And he became Muslim early or late? Late. Maybe after 20 years of the da'wah in Medina. So when he went to the Prophet ﷺ to shake hand, giving him, giving him the, the bay'ah, the pledge of Islam, he was going to shake hand with him. Then Amr ibn al-As withdrew his hand. The Prophet ﷺ said, what is the problem? Why are you not shaking hand with me? He said, oh Rasulullah, I have a request. I have condition. What is your condition? What is your request? Uh, will Allah forgive me my sins? Then the Prophet ﷺ said, told him, did not you know that Islam will destroy anything before, before it? It means Islam will clear your sins. All of your sins. Subhanallah, but the shaitan will come to you and will tell you, Allah will not forgive your sins. Or will tell the woman, you did a lot of sins. You have a lot of boyfriends. You have many photos with them. And if you do, uh, يعني, if you want to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, your boyfriends will abuse you. Okay, by, 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 bismillah. By, by uh, sending your photos. So no way to repent. This is the shaitan, subhanallah. Okay? No, you ha we have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, shaitan will push you to give the wrong fatwa. Even if you are ignorant, even if you don't have uh, knowledge. Subhanallah. Uh, and this, this is one of the يعني, a big problem in the Muslim Ummah now. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about the ignorance. How Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will take the knowledge from the Muslim Ummah. Take out the knowledge from the Muslim Ummah. The, huh? By the death of scholars. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us Hadith in Bukhari. Inna Allah la yaqbidu al-ilm intiza'an. Allah will not take the knowledge from us from our hearts. No. We will lose the knowledge by the death of scholars. Subhanallah. From the beginning, the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi the source of revelation. Then after that, the death of generation of the companions. Then the tabi'een, tabi tabi'een. Until the day of judgment. We are losing our scholars, subhanallah. Yeah, for example, if you remember, one time, we, the, the, the Sheikh bin Baz, 
Rahimullah, they, they were at the same time. Sheikh Al-Albani, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, like uh, Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiti, Muqbil Min Hadi Al-Wadi'i, MashaAllah. Yani, uh, yani uh, knowledgeable scholars, famous scholars, Rahimullah. Very short time, they passed away. In one year, Sheikh Mbaz, Sheikh Albani passed away. The next year, Sheikh bin Uthaymeen. The next year, Sheikh Muqbil al Wadi'i. Subhanallah. Uh, famous scholars and knowledgeable scholars. So that's how Allah is taking the knowledge from the Muslim Ummah. After that, what will happen? اتخذ الناس رؤوسا جهانا After the death of scholars, then people will go to the ignorant people. Maybe they will go to the da'iya, asking the da'iya fatwa. Yeah, for example, now, if you notice, okay, those people with the, the Daesh, Qaeda, Taliban, you know this Khawarij, or who are like the Khawarij, have some methodology of the Khawarij. If you check their names, you will not find any scholar. Tell me any scholar was with them. They don't have scholars. And they will not follow scholars. Because they are ignorant. Yes, maybe you will notice some of them giving a, good, uh, a nice talk. Very hot and warm talk. Encouraging people, enhancing people to make jihad. Okay? But these people don't have knowledge. I mean like the real scholars. Okay? And the same thing. The same thing, the Khawarij at the time of the companions, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. Ab, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas visited the Khawarij to discuss them. Okay, And he told them, their number was maybe 4,000, 4, 6,000, and some narrations 9,000. Okay, Thousands. He told them, while the discussion, none of you is a companion. You don't have any Sahabi among you. What is, what is the meaning of this? You are ignorant. Okay? Subhanallah. So, ignorance in the Muslim Ummah, okay, uh, yani is wasting the souls of the Muslims. And this is what we are suffering uh, now, and especially, yani, subhanallah, if you remember 2011, what happened? They call it uh, Arabi, the Arabic Spring. Where is the spring? What we see in the spring? Flowers, صح? But what we saw? Blood. And they claimed, this is good for the Muslim Ummah. And we saw some da'iyah. They are not scholars. Very happy. Very happy. About what, ha what was happening in the Muslim Ummah. And the scholars, the real scholars, told the people, be patient. What you are doing, this is totally wrong. And this is haram. You are misguiding the people. And you are misguided. You are losing more than what you lost. What they will answer? You don't know how much we suffered. You don't know what what was what is what was happening in our jails. Okay, and now what is happening? If you compare, Subhanallah. So this is from the Shaytan, telling people, Yalla, go and fight your rulers, fight your governments. Your government is zalim. They are oppressing you. And they are kuffar. Your leader is not Muslim. You have to fight him. If, you, if, you, if, if he kills you, you are shaheed. Okay? You are shaheed and your family now? Your wife, your children, digging people. Going from one country to another country. And for example, the situation in Syria, you know the situation in Syria now. Subhanallah. At the beginning, we, we, yani, the whole Muslim and non-Muslim maybe, 
very emotional with them, reacting with them. But now, خلاص, many people for, for, forgot the, Muslim, the Syrian people. And even the Syrian people, at the beginning, they, 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 they were trying to go outside other countries, Europe, Arab countries. But now some of them, wallahi, they went back to Syria. They went back to Syria, خلاص, what to do? Subhanallah. And يعني, they feel very sorry about what happened. And they hope that this did, did not happen. Okay? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them, to give them the secure again. يعني, subhanallah, Syria and other, all the Muslim countries and the, all the Muslims in the whole world. We are not happy about what happened to them. We have to support them as much as we can. Right? But the point is, here in our halqa, we have to be careful about the ignorant da'iyah. Okay? Don't follow them, even if they are giving a strong talk. <laughs> Why? Because they are using the emotions. And they will shout on the Jum'ah khutbah. Look what they are doing with our sisters, with our daughters, with our brothers. And they will circulate the videos how they are yeah, doing bad things to our sisters. Okay, why are you doing this? Yalla, go and do jihad. How? With whom? Do you know how many sects there now? They are fighting in Iraq or in Syria. And how many sects? You fight with this group or that group? Or you fight with the government, against the government? It is fitna. Okay, go and consult the scholars. They will tell you, no, don't ask the scholars. Why? Of course the scholars will tell you, no, don't go. Because they are paid from the government. Khalas. So what they are doing? They are blocking the way between you and the scholars. So now, subhanallah, I'm sure many Muslims, if you, if you tell them, okay, ask this sheikh, the famous sheikh who's knowledgeable sheikh. No, no, no. This sheikh is getting the salary from the government. He's not a, the, the good sheikh. Who's, okay, who's the good sheikh? This sheikh, he's mujahid. He's a good fighter, mujahid. He's not taking money from the governments. Okay, where is this sheikh? From where he studied? What, what, is, what are his qualifications? Allah, what is his name? Maybe sometimes they don't know the name. His, what is his name? Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah. Abu Muhammad. Okay, Abu Dujana. So, okay, this, these are the names. We don't know even their names. From where they study, from where they seek knowledge, we don't know. But they use the emotions of people. Okay, so this is very dangerous, especially for youth. If you notice, who are the followers? The youth. I mean, teenagers. Most of them less than 25 or less than 30. You will not find old people with them. Why? Because usually old people, wise. And if you have wisdom, of course, you will not follow them. Subhanallah. And uh, subhanallah, the, in the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, told us, years will come. What will happen? He mentioned the hadith, when, when, at the end of the hadith, he said, وَيَنْطِقُ فِيكُمُ الرُّوَيْبِضَةِ Okay, subhanallah. Who will speak publicly and people listen to him? Ar-Ruwaybidah. Okay, this is a new term for the companions. Then the companions asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the meaning of Ruwaybidah? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the ridiculous man speaking about general topics. Ridiculous. He doesn't have Maybe he did not finish grade six, maybe, in the school. He did not memorize the short surah. He doesn't memorize the short surah. He doesn't attend halqat. Maybe he read one article or two articles, and now he is giving speech. And people listening to him, Allah, mashallah, good speech. Allah gave him the power to, to uh, يعني, uh, يعني how to influence, influence people. Okay, but he doesn't have knowledge. So the Prophet ﷺ told us, this kind of man will speak and people listen to him. 
So be careful. Don't listen to anyone. You have to know who is this person what, or what are the proofs he's quoting in his lectures. Uh, also, the shaitan, okay, we mentioned by, by, by ignorance, he will push you to give wrong fatwa. Also, the shaitan by ignorance will push you to commit major sins. Allah, uh, because of ignorance. You know the story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. What happened? Subhanallah, Allah saved Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and his people, his followers, Bani Israel, the children of Israel, from Fir'aun. How? They came to a point, the sea in front of them and Fir'aun behind them. Khalas. Followers Musa said, done. We are done, khalas. No way to, to escape. Immediately Musa alayhi salatu wasalam said, Kalla, no, never. Allah is with us. Allah is with me. He will guide me. So what happened? He hit the sea by his stick and subhanAllah Allah opened the sea. In which day? This was? 10th of Muharram, Ashura. 10th of Muharram. That's why we are fasting Ashura. The Prophet ﷺ told us uh, we are fasting We are fasting Ashura. And this day as thank, to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah saved Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. And this year it was, it was Thursday, yesterday. After that, the subhanAllah, imagine the situation. The people of Musa, I mean the followers of Musa, saw Fir'aun in front of them by their own eyes. How Fir'aun died in front of them. And of course this made them very happy. Okay? Then they, are, they were going to, from, from Egypt to where? To Palestine. Al-Ard al-Muqaddasa, the blessed land. Al-Ard al-Muqaddasa, Bayt al-Maqdis. Okay? Allah says, وَجَاوَزْنَ بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرِ فَأَتَوْا عَلَى قَوْمٍ يَعْكُفُونَ عَلَى أَصْنَامٍ لَهُمْ So after we saved them, they saw a group of people around idols. They are worshipping, they were worshipping idols. So the people of Musa told Musa, Oh Musa, يعني, choose for us an idol like them. اجعل لنا إلها كما لهم آلهة. We want a God like them. They, they see their God. And they are worshipping their God. They asked Musa, please, يعني, choose a God for us. We can't see him. We, 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 we bow for it. and we, we sit around it. What was the answer from Musa alayhi salatu wasalam? قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجْهَلُونَ You said this because of ignorance, jahl. This is the danger of ignorance. And the, the same th or something the same happened with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He was with the companions after the conquest of Mecca. After the conquest of Mecca, Fat Mecca. Which year? The eighth year. The eighth year after, uh, sorry, before, before Hunayn battle. The conquest of Mecca was in Ramadan. And this, uh, the, the, the battle of Hunayn was after Ramadan. So many Muslims went with the Prophet ﷺ to fight. And many of them new Muslims. Abu Waqid al-Layti radiyallahu ta'ala said, and we were new Muslims. Yani only for, alaykum salam, only for one month maybe, or two months. Tayyip, one month or two months. So of course, they don't have a lot of knowledge. So they asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were walking with the Prophet ﷺ and they saw the same thing. They saw a group of mushriks sitting around or under a tree. Why? They, uh, they were seeking a blessing from this tree. Hanging their weapons, the swords, the spears. Okay, 
Why? Because these, this group of mushriks believe if we sit under this tree, we'll get the barakah, the blessing. We'll be stronger. We'll get the power from this tree. Like many Muslims now. They think the power from where? From this crystal in the car. You see some, some cars, they put crystals, right? Did you notice this or no? Huh? No? Yes, wahid, only one? Different, different shapes, but you, you, different shapes. Maybe it is a, 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 like a star shape or, uh, or sometimes blue. They use the blue um, in, in the shape of the horseshoe. Horseshoe. Horse, horseshoe. Okay? Why? Power. Yes, power. This is power. Or this is protection. Or they put, uh, what you call this, uh, the, the bracelet, huh? Why? This will protect me. Or the rings and the stone. The stone, and the, of course, wearing the ring is halal. Okay? If it is silver for the man. For the man. But they put stone. If it is a green, this is for marriage. If it is a blue, this is for rizq, sustenance. <laughs> if it is uh, yellow, uh, okay. They have different beliefs. Okay. This is the same exactly like the mushrik. And no doubt, this is shirk and haram. If you believe, these stones will protect me. These stones will help me. These stones will make me happy with my wife. These stones will make me pregnant, I mean the woman. Haram. This is shirk. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. Can I have some water, please? So, the, the companions with the Prophet sallallahu of course, not all of them, the new Muslims. The new Muslims and some of them said, O oh, Rasulullah, اجعل لنا ذات أنواط كما لهم ذات أنواط رسول الله choose a tree for us like them they have a tree they have something they can't see in front of them they are gaining power and blessing from it okay immediately the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said الله أكبر إنها السنن قلتم والذي نفسي بيده كما قالت بنو إسرائيل موسى اجعل لنا إلها كما لهم آلهة قال إنكم قوم تجهرون تجهلون immediately the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said الله أكبر the same way you are following the same way you said exactly what the people of Musa said choose a god for us like them they have a god and Musa told them إنكم قوم تجهلون this is because of ignorance you are ignorant لا تتبعون سنن من كان قبلكم this is the reality the Prophet ﷺ told us that we will follow exactly okay, those people who were before us. He means that Yehud and Nasara, Jews and Christians, and now Muslims follow them. Many Muslims, subhanAllah, follow them. And especially if we talk about sport, a'udhu billah, don't talk about the sport. If you see how the Muslim Ummah our children, the youth, how they follow? Very strange, subhanAllah. And the way they dress, and the way they, they walk and they talk, and the, yeah, and the, the movement of their hands and everything. SubhanAllah. Hair cut and everything. SubhanAllah. Everything, SubhanAllah. This is, wallahi, one of the major problems. And the Muslim Ummah. And the problem, we take our knowledge from the football players. And we say, look, this is a good Muslim football player. Alhamdulillah, we have a famous Muslim football player in this team. Okay, where is the importance in this? Importance in Islam, knowledge. Who's memorizing Quran? Who's memorizing the Hadith? Who's making da'wah? Who's doing good application? For Islam, website for Islam. 
we need our children to do something new for uh, yeah sorry not new for islam to 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 improve the things to uh, spread islam yani now 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 if if i see a muslim foot, famous muslim foot, football player okay do you like to you push your children yalla leave the study leave the quran and be a good muslim football player because now the whole world saying well like this man is a famous football player and he is muslim what what, what he did for islam yani what he did yani uh, did he bring the books for islam is he praying on time is he covering his awra yani there are many mistakes and playing football and the problem he is playing yani i mean the, the, these muslims football players not all of them yani most of the time So what do you think that, that that they will say most of the time they will read Quran together <laughs> they will revise Riyadh uh, Salihin or they will read the Bukhari of course not maybe uh, <laughs> drinking khamr and drug addiction or or maybe most of the time sport most of the time dunya this is not the way of the muslim the way of muslim is clear you can find the way of the muslim and the seer and the biography of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam so by ignorance the shaitan by ignorance will push you to commit major sins shirk and we mentioned the example from the quran and sunnah and also another thing the shaitan by ignorance will push the women and also men to uncover their aura ya bani adam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us ya bani adam لا يفتننكم الشيطان كما أخرج أبويكم من الجنة ينزع عنهما لباسهما. What happened immediately after our father Adam and our mother Hawa Eve after they ate from the tree? What happened? Their aura uncovered because of the shaytan. And now. many muslims because of the shaitan okay what we see now subhanallah many women uncovering their aura and please don't understand uncovering the aura it means to walk naked no now many women not covering their aura the arms this is aura maybe the women i mean some of the sisters with abaya masha allah and maybe sometimes with niqab but she's not covering the the arm and this is part of the aura i mean between the wrist and the elbow ijma all the scholars consensus that this is aura you will find them uncovering this when she is in the jam'iyya in the market or at work okay when she is moving most of the time she is uncovering this this is from the shaitan or subhanallah you will see the their trousers above the ankle and the men should do this not the women but now subhanallah the women are doing this she's covering the hair and uncovering the the feet and part of the leg this is the shaitan pushing our daughters our yani and our sisters to do the haram things cover your body Yes there is diff- different opinion about the face about the hand i mean from the wrist up to the tip of the fingers some scholars said wajib to cover others scholars said this is mustahab but who said it is allowed to uncover this part of the arm who said that it is allowed to uncover part of the leg and you put some jewelry on, on your leg who said this the shaitan subhanallah So the ignorance the shaitan will push you by ignorance the shaitan will push you by ignorance to commit major sins If you notice the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam what he said wa illa tasrif anni kaydahun asbu ilayhin wa akum min aljahilin oh allah you know you know at the beginning the wife of the king tried 
with him. Then later, what happened? Not only the wife of the king, also her friends, all of them tried with Yusuf Ali Sattusam. Why? Because he's Subhanallah, yani, handsome, yani, Jamal, yani, his beauty was perfect. Alayhi salatu wasalam. What Yusuf asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, if you don't keep me away from them, I will be one of the ignorant. So Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam did not say, I will be misguided, I will be one of the jahileen. So ignorance is a disaster. Subhanallah. This is what Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned, Surah Yusuf. And also, uh, Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, what he told his people, Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, you know, the people of Lut, okay, used to do the homosexuality, wal-iyadu billah. What he said, إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ الرِّجَالَ شَهْوَةً مِنْ دُونِ النِّسَاءِ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجْهَلُونَ You are, yani subhanallah, you are coming to your desire with men, and this is abnormal. Why? إِنَّكُمْ قَوْمٌ تَجْهَلُونَ This is because you are ignorant. Again, ignorance with shirk, ignorance with uncovering the aura, ignorance committing the adultery. Subhanallah. Ignorance again and again. Ignorance, subhanallah, jahl, will push you uh, for discriminating among the Muslim Ummah. I am white, you are black. I am Arab, you are non-Arab. I am from this tribe and you are from that tribe. This is jahiliyyah. The Prophet ﷺ was fighting this kind of jahiliyyah. Discrimination among the Muslim Ummah. Something happened between one man from Muhajirin and one man from the Ansar. Okay? One, one of them hit his friend. Then what he said, Ya al Muhajirin. Okay? The Muhajiri man said, calling his tribe. All of the Muslims. All of the Muslims. But those who came from Med Mecca to Medina called Muhajireen. And those who live in Medina before the migration called the Ansar. So one man said, Oh, Muhajireen. The other one said, Ya al Ansar. Then it, it was uh, a big fight was going to happen. But Alhamdulillah, this did not happen. What the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, leave it. Da'wal this is, he, call, he, he named this Da'wal Jahiliya. This is Jahiliya call. Jahiliya means the time of ignorance. This is the, the same thing before Islam. You are from Quraysh, khalas. Like in, during the Hajj. They do something special. VIB Hajj, Quraysh. How? All people should do tawaf to go around the Kaaba naked, totally naked, without any covering. Men and women. Men during the day, women during the night. But there is an exception. If you are from Mecca, if you are, sorry, from, if you are from Quraysh tribe, then you can wear your dress. You can cover your, your aura. Okay? Okay, from where this? This is from the shaitan. Ignorance. Can you imagine people go around the Kaaba without anything? Except people of Quraysh. Or if a person, if you know Wasta, or what we call Wasta, okay? A person uh, from Quraysh, if he gives you his dress, then it is okay. But by your own dress, no, not allowed. Shunada, what is this ignorance? This from the shaitan, subhanAllah, they change the rules. So this is jahiliya. This is jahiliya. And yani, subhanAllah, the Prophet sallallahu told us that the jahiliya will last, will not finish. It is in this ummah, the jahiliya.
The Prophet ﷺ told us, we will not leave it. Of course, when he said this, it doesn't mean it is halal. No, it is haram. This is one of the major sins. We have to fight this. But subhanAllah, the, 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 the kuffar are trying to do this. Okay? Yani, how many Muslim countries now? Okay, and even within the same, Muslim, the, the, the same Muslim country, how many groups, levels? Okay, this is from the kuffar and from the shaitan. He wants the, Muslim, the Muslims to be uh, yani, different levels. He, they want the Muslim Ummah to fight, the infighting. Subhanallah. Also, because of ignorance, the shaitan will push you to kill your friend, to kill your brother. Subhanallah. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned hadith. Okay. Or, or, sorry, yani about the story of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. You know, when he tried to stop the Egyptian man from beating the Israeli man. Okay. What, what happened? Allah says, فَوَكَزَهُ Musa. He pushed him. The scholars say, بِجُمْعِيَدِهِ يعني By his hand. And Musa was very strong, alayhi salatu was salam. And of course, he did not intend to kill him. Okay. But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ What Musa said? قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ This is because of the shaitan. Subhanallah. And Musa realized that this was a mistake. Alayhi salatu was salam. But no doubt, Allah forgave this mistake from Musa. So even the shaitan will push you sometimes to kill your friend. Or maybe to kill your wife. Subhanallah. How many times we, we hear strange stories? A woman killed the husband, a husband killed the wife, a son killed his mother or father or his brother, his sister. It's from the shaitan. It's from the shaitan. And also this is because of ignorance. Jahl. They don't know how to solve like these problems. Not by killing. This is not allowed. You kill your brother or your sister if they, if they did a mistake. Subhanallah. Also, one of the major things and the biggest problem also related with the khawarij as we mentioned. The shaitan will uh, control the people by what? Ignorance and knowledge, uh, yani in, in the deen. What the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned about the khawarij. What he mentioned. He said, Qawm, they are people, they read Quran. But, la yujawizu hanajirahum. Okay, the meaning of the, this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying, when they read the Quran by their tongue, the Quran will not go to the heart. Or they, when they read the Quran, the Quran will not go up. It means it will not be accepted. Only they are, they are reading by their tongue and they, by their mouth, but it will not go up. Because the good deeds go up. Allah says in the Quran, وَالْعَمَلْ صَالِحِ the righteous deed, Allah raises it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so because Allah will not accept anything from them, so it will not go beyond their mouth or their thoughts. The Prophet told us, they will yamruquna min al-deen. What does it mean yamruquna min al-deen? If you are, uh, if you go for hunting, okay, and you use the spear, and if you hit the, for example, the animal strongly, what will happen? The arrow will enter from one side, and it will pierce the animal, it will go outside from the other side. The Prophet ﷺ told us, the khawarij like this spear, or like this arrow, it will enter and goes out. Okay. Some scholars say that the, the khawarij are kuffar, they are not Muslims. Okay, and uh, some scholars say, uh, and majority of scholars say they are Muslims, but no doubt they are misguided. They are Muslims, 
but they are misguided. Okay, so what is the meaning of this hadith? It means they don't understand anything from Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us hadith subhanallah in Bukhari Muslim. This hadith in Bukhari Muslim. يقتلون أهل الإسلام ويدعون أهل الأوثان. They kill Muslims and they leave the non-Muslims. Subhanallah. And we see this now. They are attacking the, mainly the Muslims and they are avoiding the non-Muslims. One famous uh, event happened to one of the companions, Abdullah bin Khabbab, radiyallahu ta'ala an. The Khawarij met him and they told him something about Uthman, Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala an. You should talk about them badly. Okay? He refused. What they did? They killed him. He's a Sahabi. He, they killed him. And also there was a woman with him, a pregnant woman. They opened their, her, her, subhanallah, stomach. Then when they saw a pig, they killed this pig, khinzir. Okay? So when they killed it, they realized that this belongs to a Christian man. Then they felt sorry and they went to apologize to that Christian, the owner of this khinzir. Subhanallah. And there is a famous story. They, they, in, in some of the khawarij asked one of the companions, I think Abdullah ibn Umar. They asked, oh, Abdullah ibn Umar, what about uh, if I am in Hajj, can I kill the, the mosquito, the bug? Abdullah Umar said, Wallahi, very strange. You are asking me about mosquito and you killed the companions? You killed Ali ibn Abi Talib, you killed Uthman uh, Affan. And now you are asking about mosquito? SubhanAllah, what is this? Okay, and also the Prophet told us, تَحْقِرُونَ صَلَاتَكُمْ إِلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ If you compare yourself, your Worship with their worship, you you will feel that I'm doing nothing. Why? Because they pray a lot, they recite Quran a lot, they fast a lot. Yeah. For example, if you are praying at night two hours, they are praying six hours. Subhanallah. So they pray a lot, they recite Quran a lot. Okay, but they are ignorant. They are ignorant. The Prophet ﷺ said, "If I meet them." I will kill them. If I meet them, I will kill them. Like ad, like killing the people of Ad. Subhanallah. Ignorance. When Abdullah ibn Abbas, at the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib, okay, you know uh, يعني, what happened at the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib, there was uh, يعني, an event between Ali ibn Abi Talib, his uh, army of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the, and the army of Muawiyah. And before that, Ali ibn Abi Talib and Zubair and Talha ibn Ubaidillah and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Then after that, okay, uh, they, uh, they, they tried to do a settlement. But subhanallah, this did not happen. Amr ibn al-As from Muawiyah's side radiallahu ta'ala anhum Ali ibn Abi Talib and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari from the side of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. We love all of them. We have, we have to love all of them. We have to love the side of Muawiyah and also the side of Ali. Why? Because all of them companions. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. All of them are praised by Allah and the Quran. Okay? So after that, what happened? A group from the side of, uh, yeah, maybe from both sides or from the side of Ali, gathered and agreed to fight them in a place called the Nahrawan or Harura. What they said? They said, we have to fight Ali ibn Abi Talib. He is not Muslim. He is not uh, using the Quran. He sent Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. 
And also the same thing Muawiyah. So all of them kuffar. Ali ibn Abi Talib Kafir, radiyallahu ta'ala an. He was the best at that time. He was the best man. Ali ibn Abi Talib. Okay? So subhanallah, Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Ya Amir Mu'mineen, da'ani adhab ibn Aqish. Abdullah ibn Abbas asked Ali ibn Abi Talib, please give me the chance to discuss them. Ali ibn Talib said, no, be careful, they are very dangerous. Yani maybe they will kill you, they do something dangerous, wrong. Yani, yani, they will beat you, they will yani, do something. Abdullah ibn Abbas said, yani, don't worry, let me try. So Abdullah ibn Abbas dressed very nice and went to them. When he went there, their number, uh, as I mentioned, thousands, four, six, or nine thousands. He gave them salam. They did not reply. Why? Because they believed that Abdullah ibn Abbas is not Muslim. So it is not allowed to give him salam or to reply salam. Ali ibn Talib said, Salamu alaykum, say ahlan, welcome. They did not say wa alaykum salam. Subhanallah. Tayyib. Then he said, I came to you from the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and none of you, no, none of them with you. And I'm here to discuss you, to answer you. So some of them said, be careful, don't discuss him. Because they are very good in argument, in disputing, in discussion. But other people said, why? We should discuss, we should follow the haqq. So, subhanAllah, sometimes there are good people, I mean with good intention. But they are misguided. They are followers. Okay? So, they opened the discussion. What is your problem? Tell me, what are your problems? So they said, this, this, this. And Abdullah ibn Abbas answered all of them. Number one, number two, number three. Then after that, subhanallah, maybe 2,000 or 4,000. Alhamdulillah, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, yani, for example, one of the issues, they said, they said, Ali and Muawiyah kuffar, both of them kuffar, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. Why? They said, because... Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ If you don't take the Quran as a rule, your rule, okay, if you don't judge by the Quran, then you are kafir. And Ali sent Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, Muawiyah sent Amr ibn al-As. So why they did not follow the Quran? Then Abdullah ibn Abbas told them, okay, what we should do about a situation, okay, uh, I mean husband-wife problem. If there is a conflict, husband-wife. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us? Huh? Oh. Send one man from the side of the husband and one man from the wife of the side of the wife. So he, Abdullah ibn Abbas told them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran told us, if there is a problem between only two persons, husband, wife, okay, we should use two wise people to solve this problem. So what do you think, which is more important, husband, wife relationship or two big groups, thousands? Then they said, yes, you are true, you are correct. So subhanAllah, they, they mentioned their points and Abdullah ibn Abbas answered all of them. Radiyallahu ta'ala, alhamdulillah, they did it. So why this happened? Okay, because of jahl, ignorance. So this is the way of the shaitan, pushing them. And that's why we have the khawarij, subhanAllah. They don't have knowledge. Many times, wallahi, yani, when we discuss people, we realize that they don't have knowledge. They hear one information from that website and they listen to one lecture from that sheikh, okay, and he read a book written by a known person, okay. They did not study the knowledge. They did not study like Al-Urbain, Nawiyya, Fiqh, Shafi'i, Fiqh, Maliki, Sunan Abi Dawood, Al-Bukhari, Muslim. They did not study from the famous scholars. 
So that's why they are يعني, misguiding the Muslim Ummah. So this is very important to study the knowledge from the authentic and يعني, uh, trust uh, sources. Don't read for anyone, especially nowadays. Yalla, read this book. Ah, mashallah, very, very nice book, wallahi. Mashallah, good English. Okay, why good English? Good English doesn't mean that. Uh, good knowledge. Okay? Because subhanallah, munafiqeen, as, uh, the hypocrites. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the hypocrites? When they speak, you listen to them. Mashallah, very nice talks. Tayyip? يقول ابن حجر رحمه الله هو اكسبلين صحيح البخاري about the خوارج they say to anyone against them anyone don't agree with them in their opinions كافر then after that it is halal to kill them and they avoid the people of the book okay why because no there is there is a contract between me, between us and them. We have to protect them if they are paying the jizya, khalas. And the Muslims? Killing the Muslims. Okay? So they are busy in killing the Muslims. Subhanallah. And all of them, athar ibadatul juhal. This is very important from Hajar rahimahullah. What he said, all of this as a result of what? The ignorance of the, uh, the, the worshipper. Ignorant worshiper. They worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, but without knowledge. Like the story we mentioned. When he asked him, I killed 99 people, he said, no, khalas, no way for repentance. So he killed him. So why he killed him? Because of his fatwa. Subhanallah. And of course, yeah, subhanallah, this kind, this kind of people, I mean the khawarij, they will speak badly about our scholars. Okay? And this is not strange. Why? Because their leader, I mean the leader of the Khawarij. Who's the leader of the Khawarij? Dul Khuwaisir al-Tamimi. Dul Khuwaisir al-Tamimi. He is the head and the leader of the Khawarij. He said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was at the time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, ya Muhammad. He told our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, be just. As if he's saying, you are dhalim. You are oppressor. You are not justice. You are not just. He's saying this to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu He said, if I'm not just, who will be just? Hey, so, يعني, don't, يعني, don't think that it is strange when you see these people accusing our scholars, attacking Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Baz al-Albani. Okay? Why? Because the same thing, they, they attacked our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Can you imagine this? So of course they will say to our scholars, oh, don't listen to them. They are scholars of the government. They are scholars of the, of the Hayd wa Nifas. They are only talking about the Salah, the, 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 the ministerial period and fasting. Okay. And who know? Okay. I mean, what, what, what type of scholar knows the, the haqq and the, the general issues? If these scholars don't know, so who are the scholars? Who are the real scholars? Who should I ask? Who should I ask? Yani, what they mean? They mean if you want to ask about the salah, about jam, qasr, how to move your finger, okay, go and ask, for example, Sheikh Alban, Sheikh Bin Baz, ask like these scholars, okay. And if I if I like to ask about the situation of the Muslim Ummah, no, no, don't ask Ibn Baz, don't ask, don't read for Ibn Baz, they don't know what is going on with the Muslim Ummah. And also the same thing, Ibn Baz, Ibn Atimin, they are taking salary from the scholars, from the government. Of course, they will not give you the correct answer. Okay. Okay. Let's say I am agreeing with you on this point. Who should I ask now? Should I go for jihad or not? From where I can take the fatwa? Yalla, tell me. What is his answer? 
he cannot answer or he will mention a name unknown name or he will mention young <laughs> da'ya from maybe from a non-muslim country he lives in a non-muslim country <laughs> subhanallah yani, uh, there was a long discussion between one of the shuyukh uh, with another sheikh. Oh, sorry, one of the shuyukh with one young boy. Then this sheikh asked, this sheikh in Kuwait, he asked this boy, okay, from where this, this fatwa or this methodology? No, there is a sheikh in Saudi, his name this and this. Okay, at that time, that sheikh, his age, less than 30 or about around 30. And the age of Sheikh bin Baz more than 80. The age of Sheikh bin Uthameen about 70. What, uh, يعني, what he studied, how many books and... You don't know. How you compare? Of course, I don't mean that always, يعني, the old scholars, they are correct and the young uh, uh, da'i, they are wrong. But I mean the general fatwa should should come from old scholars who studied the knowledge and who, who, who know the history, who studied the history. Yeah, for example, Sheikh Mithaymin said, and not only Sheikh Mithaymin, many scholars said, if you check any country, I mean any Muslim group, went against their rulers, their situation is uh, after the fighting their rulers is worse than before fighting the rulers. If you check all of them, what we know, okay? And we can see this now, subhanAllah. The situation now in these Muslim countries who went against their, their rulers, okay? If you compare the situation, يعني, when we ask them, okay? They, they will answer you, no, our situation before was much better. No doubt, the, we, we, our situation was much better. Subhanallah. And this is the ignorance. Yani, the ignorance will uh, destroy the Muslim Ummah. Subhanallah. And people who follow the ignorant da'iya also, they will be destroyed. They will be destroyed. The Muslim Ummah should wake up. Don't follow anyone. Okay, ask who are you are following. What are the bases? What are the proofs from the Quran and Sunnah? Okay, and also we need to read the history of the Muslim Ummah. What happened before? Subhanallah. These uh, yani actions against the rulers, against the governments, brought the khair and the good for the Muslim Ummah or bad? Okay, you have to study this. You have to re realize. It is not only, yalla, I should do this and whatever ha will happen, I don't care. No, you have to care. You have to care. You should think about the result also. The Prophet ﷺ told us, sorry, he told Aisha, and of course the whole, all of us, I will not make the Kaaba complete. Why? Because the Kaaba is incomplete building now. The same at the time of Rasulullah He said, I will not make it full. Complete. Why? Because of the new Muslims. If I build the Kaaba now, the Prophet what, what, what will happen? Maybe the new Muslims will, will leave Islam again. Yani last year they are Muslims and now you are destroying the Kaaba. They, 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 they will leave Islam maybe. So the Prophet وسلم, okay, estimate the, the good and bad. Okay, we need to build the Kaaba completely. But on the other way, there is possibility that many Muslims will leave Islam. So which is more important? To protect the Muslims or to build the Kaaba? Of course, we have to protect the Muslims. Alhamdulillah, now we are doing Tawaf. We are doing Tawaf, Alhamdulillah. Every day people doing Tawaf. And doing every year we are doing Hajj, Alhamdulillah. So we have to estimate. We need wisdom. We need to follow the wise scholars. Okay, not anyone, not the emotions. If you follow the emotions, your emotions will destroy you. Okay, uh, this is of course a very important uh, issue. So we are to, uh, we talk today about the one of the way of the shaitan is 
ignorance. How the shaitan will enter to your heart. How to destroy the Muslim ummah. How to destroy your life, your future by the ignorance. Inshallah, next week we'll talk about also a very important, uh, very dangerous way of the shaitan, which is al-ghadab. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْغَضَبُ The anger. Okay? When you kill, if you are angry. When you divorce, when you are angry. When you beat, when you are angry. When you take wrong decisions, if you are angry. Subhanallah. So inshallah we'll talk about next week. بإذن الله. جزاكم الله خير. صلى الله عليه وسلم. محمد.